It is a beautiful Saturday on a Father's Day weekend, and an idea I've been kicking around for a while is to use some solar panels to charge up the batteries for our electric conversion for this old Glastron, and we're going to see if we can get that done. The battery bank storage box is just one of these patio boxes to put boat cushions in, and I believe I've got some other videos that show the installation of this box. One of the nice things about getting something that's off the shelf is that there are off the shelf covers as well. So you don't have to have anything specialty, special made, or make it up yourself, which is what I was thinking about doing. And it even sketched out some plans and was picking up some vinyl material. But if you can get one that's already made for 25 bucks, it seems to be the best way to go. For our system here, this looks a little bit more involved than it really is. It's pretty straightforward. We've just got three eco-worthy batteries. These are 48 volt batteries that are each actually about 51.2, 52 volts. And when I look at the Renology meter on the dash, it shows up even higher, so we can take a look at that in a minute. But as far as our solar connections here, we've just got a Victron solar controller. And we've got some plugs here just to plug this into our battery bank system. And then this will go to our solar panels that are over there. At the moment for this e-propulsion Navy 6, we've got our connection cut here. But if we turn that on, then we can come over and look at our readout here. And with just that on and just the motor pulling a little bit, <clears throat> pulling about four and a half watts, and that's our battery voltage level at the moment. It's actually a little bit lower than this because we did run it yesterday. Wayne the boat guy came down and we did some running around, some testing with this stuff. And I put this on charge last night for a little while to bring it up a little bit, but I don't think we're quite to 100% at this moment. These panels obviously are just leaning against our fence here, and these are still new. They still have cardboard corners on them. I found a guy not too far away that was selling some of these off, and I believe these are roof-mounted panels, or that's at least what the design was for. So we've got our cabling in the back, and we're just going to tie these together. I am going to put some rods, some posts in the ground to keep these from sliding out. And this arrangement here is pretty much just to test. I want to see how this works and then with the Victron app see what our actual readout is before we make any permanent big frames. The way the sun works is during the afternoon it goes and sets kind of in that direction. So we should pick up some pretty good sun for the balance of the afternoon. Connecting these panels, they just plug into each other. Just keep running one into the next. For charging, what we've been doing is just running an extension cord from the house down the hill and plugging it in. And we certainly can do that for a faster charge. But the boat sits a lot of the time not being used. And I think it's just cool to be able to use some very affordable solar panels and have this charge naturally. So we'll see how this works. I'm going to go into the shop, get a few parts, some extension wires, and some clamps, and a few odds and ends to make this a little bit more stable for this testing part. Regarding polarity with these panels, it really couldn't be any simpler. So in between those two, we plugged in those wires that just there's the fish just splashing around, <laughs> keeping me company. So we plugged in those wires right there, and that just daisy chains them more or less together. So on this side, we've got our positive, positive plug. It looks different from the other one, and there's actually a little positive right, right there, right above my thumb. So this is our positive side. And then for our negative side is just over here and it looks different and we've got our negative indicator 
on here as well. So there's our negative line right there. One of the best uses of a 50 year old John boat is an upside down bench. <laughs> so I've used this for a bench many, many times. So we've got some leftover aluminum angle stock that a friend of mine gave to me and only the best hardware that Harbor Freight has. And we're going to use these to mount to the back of the panels just to kind of hold them together more as one unit. And we're just going to use two of these. One towards the top, one towards the middle. And then we'll put some stakes in the ground to keep this from sliding forward. And then we'll get to wiring up. And again, this is kind of just all temporary to see what kind of results we can get from this. We're fortunate in our location here because in direct sunlight, this could be extraordinarily tiring. We have shade until about lunchtime, early afternoon, and then we have sun all afternoon. So that's when our charging will take place. But it's very pleasant out here right now to work on this stuff. Our initial testing here, we've got the panels plugged into the solar Victron charger in the battery bank box. And looking at our data on our Renogy readout here, we're getting about 26, 27, 28 watts. And this is in almost full shade. There's that little bit of sun glare on the side there. But even with that, we're getting about 25 to 28 watts at this point. And you can see the up arrows to the right of the 150 amp hour indicating that the power is coming from the sky. So I am really curious as the afternoon moves on and the sun starts moving into this airspace and hitting the panels more directly what the numbers are. Let me turn on the Victron app. There's a Bluetooth app for this solar controller and see what kind of data we're getting at that point. But that's cool. That's promising. Looking at the Victron app, which is talking to the controller, we're pretty much in line here. So the app is saying about 30 watts. The Renogy is saying 26, 25, probably a little bit of a lag in here. And as far as the Renogy readout, I've got some more calibration to do on that. So at the moment, I trust the Victron app a little bit more. And we're talking about 64 volts at the moment, 62, 64. As long as we're above 52, 53 volts where the batteries are at, as long as we're over that, that means we're adding to it. If we're below that, then we're not adding to it. So that's something to keep in mind. Some of the data that I have, have in the Victron app is from when I was playing with the Harbor Freight panels. So the historical data will be inaccurate. I'll need to delete that and reduce that. But that's kind of cool. That's really neat. And again, we're pretty much in shade here at this point. So we'll see how that goes this afternoon. And something I need to adjust with the Renogy is, I don't know if that's reading on the camera here, but you can see it's pulsating. Kind of the backlight comes on and off and on and off and on and off. That's a setting which I believe is to indicate that it's receiving a charge, but something that I'll probably disable. And again, that 100% readout for the batteries is a calibration setting. I don't think we're quite there because we were using the boat yesterday uh, when Wayne came down and we motored around for 45 minutes or so and we used a little bit of more juice than, than that is indicating. So, we'll keep an eye on this, and I think this is pretty cool. I've been letting this run this afternoon, and we're in late afternoon sun, so it's a little after 4 p.m., so we're at a little bit of a strange angle from the sun, but I've been keeping an eye on the wattage output. I don't know if I can catch this without so much glare, but we've been peaking up to between three and 400 watts, 350, 380 watts in the last 20 minutes or so, last half hour. So five, six amp hours, kind of kicking in. And as noted, we're sort of in late afternoon sun here. So we're at a little bit of a sideways angle on these, but these are definitely picking up 
picking up juice and loading up our batteries. So we'll have some fun playing with the orientation of those panels. I've got some ideas to move them out more in front of the aluminum boat there, make some sort of permanent rack that's a little bit more oriented in a more productive way. But it's cool to see these numbers kind of moving up and down. So we're in the 200s now, and then it peaks back up into the 300 range. And it does match pretty well with the Victron app, which is kind of fun because I can stand on my deck and keep an eye on what's coming out of this. So a fun project and something to continue to work on. Free, uh, free battery recharging. And just following up with the app here. Don't know if that's picking that up clearly enough. We have the real time and it does adjust pretty quickly. And if we go to our history here, we can see that just this afternoon, we've picked up 260 watt hours with a maximum of 351 watts. And our consumption rate there, we can go to our trends and see what our outputs are, at least what our trends are. And this is the first kind of stab, the first setup with this. So lots of room to play around. But that is just so cool to see in real time as we wiggle around a little bit based on when the trees blow and a little bit of a shadow takes over. But very cool. Just some rough numbers here with what we're adding to our battery bank with these solar panels. So if we're getting about six amp hours per hour going back in, over the course of say five hours in an afternoon, that would be 30 amp hours adding back into our tank. And our tank, so to speak, is 150 amp hours if we were to flatten it, which is not usually the case. So very often it's still 25, 50% full. So after just a couple days, thereabouts, plus or minus, of sitting at the dock collecting some sun, then we're back full up. So it's always ready to go. Very cool. And as a quick side note, I've been impressed with the range of the Bluetooth signal on this controller. I can be in my house and still snag data. It's not a strong signal, but it's strong enough to see what the status is. So it's kind of cool to be sitting at my desk or kitchen table and keep an eyeball on what's going on out here. The wires that are going through the water will be fixed because I don't like that. <laughs> but uh, this is a fun project. I think part of the thing with projects like this is a lot of folks are reluctant to get into them because they think that they're too intimidating or imposing. And my view is just start playing around with this stuff. Find used stuff, find cheap things, and just start cutting into it. Do some research and play around with it. And don't take it too seriously. Thanks very much for taking a look. Mm -hmm.